Good morning. Good morning. Happy Tuesday. Good morning to you. A very happy Tuesday. <clears throat> so I took, I'm going to say, I took Rick's advice when he talked about he was giving up coffee, so he's drinking tea. Okay. I grabbed a cinnamon black tea. It's very, very tasty. Very nice. Congratulations. Good for you, sir. Mm -hmm. Who don't know, Chris is quite the coffee guy, so. <laughs> I don't know. He actually, you, I mean, you used to own or run a, a coffee shop. Yes. Right? And my yeah. wife and I, we owned a coffee shop. That was back when we were having our third child is when we decided to get rid of the coffee shop because three young children and owning a business was hard. Yeah. And we decided to focus on the kids. But yeah, we owned a coffee shop for two and a half years. And mm -hmm. uh, because of that, I am a little bit of a coffee snob. I admit. So are you as much a tea snob as a coffee snob? Or is tea, tea just tea? Uh, I would say I'm not a big tea snob, but I have similar things. Like I can't drink Folgers or Maxwell House coffee, and I can't okay. drink Lipton tea. Like, okay. It just doesn't, like, I guess my thought is if I'm going to drink it, I want to enjoy it. And those things I don't enjoy. Yeah. Do you feel like it's more the taste? or the name that's associated with it. it's the taste like like my dad always drank folders and i just it's to me it's gross i'm not going to say it's gross because a lot of people like it but for me right. my taste buds reject it it's like mm. maybe take two sips of it before my mouth is just like nah, i don't like this yeah so if you had to choose between folgers or maxwell house or no coffee at all what would you choose i would go with no coffee <laughs> <laughs> okay i'm a snob all right whatever <laughs> all, right. all good i i like me some good coffee too so it's, i can't honestly i can't remember the last time i drank a, a folgers or a maxwell house coffee so <laughs> i i remember no offense to anyone out there who are loyals yeah. to either I one tried, of i tried it again i thought you know what we're just gonna see, like, and so my during COVID, we did a church in home with our neighbors, and he was a Folgers guy, and so he was making his Folgers coffee, and I thought, you know, I'll try it. Nope. I <laughs> even like, hey man, can I bring coffee next week? <laughs> cool. All, all right. right, enough coffee. Let's get into the word. Enough coffee, yes. Hope all you have some coffee that you enjoy, whatever that may be. But this morning, we are getting ourselves back into 2 Timothy. Um, yesterday, we got through all of chapter 3, and now we're up to chapter, or I'm sorry, yeah, chapter 3, and now we're up to chapter 4. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm excited. Read through, we read through a little bit of this, I think, beforehand, and just there's so much good stuff in here. So now how far, not sure how far we'll get as far as how many words we'll read, but I, I believe God has some pretty awesome things to show us this morning through these words. So uh, I'm, uh, I'm going to jump into it. I'm going to read for us this morning. I'm reading out of the NIV. Yep. And Chris jumps in. I believe you're reading from the New King James, right? Yep, New King James. Which is what I cut my teeth on because uh, I was given a little Gideon's Bible early on. And I worked in a factory, and I would have that thing on me all the time. So I, I definitely read more New King James than probably anything else. Did a lot of memorizing out of that thing. So, so. The, and and I think it's it's just worth saying real quick that yeah. NIV is good. The New King James is is still good. I mine's a study Bible. That's why I keep using it. Mm -hmm. uh, but just before we got on here, me and Tony were saying that ESV is some of our is actually one of our favorite script, um, versions to read. I just don't have a paper version yet, so. Uh, but yeah, those are those are all good versions to. You'll get close to what the words were that were originally written. You can trust those Bibles usually. So. Yep. Yep. For sure. For sure. So cool. All right, let's jump in. Okay. Verse one, chapter four. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead. And in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I give you this charge. Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. Whoa. I think, yeah, we're going to will right there. 
All right. So there you go. This is the 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 probably the sending off the end of his letter that again he always he always does this like all right I want to start ending this letter in a chapter later but yeah so I charge you uh, before God and Jesus Christ uh, mm -hmm. preach the word I just uh, again as a pastor I'm like let's go okay all right let's do it. I, I I don't know something in me jumps and really wants to go out and preach right now. So that's yeah. good stuff. Yeah. So my I, I love what it. Uh, so mine words it a little bit differently right at the beginning. I love that it says in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus right up front in mine. Um, I charge you this because that's like that's where Paul lived. Like that that was the example that Jesus set. Right. So he, he was the one who said, you know, he he did everything that he did as a man empowered by the power of the Holy Spirit. Right. Because he was filled with the Holy Spirit when he was baptized in the River Jordan. And then he always he, he said, I, I only do what I see the father doing. I only say what I hear the father saying. And so just that idea of like that was his life of walking in in the presence of God. And so his life reflected that. Um, it was the same for Paul. You know, I believe that's why he had the faith and the strength to walk through the trials and and the the hard things that he had to go through was because that he walked. He was he was before the presence of God in Christ. Like he he knew God was with him and he knew that uh, that Christ had commissioned him to do what he was doing. Um, so preach the word. I, I wanted to touch on that because. I, ha I think about it often, honestly, when I hear anytime I hear something about the word in the word. I I'm thinking what what was Paul's context? What was he saying? What was anybody saying who was saying preach the word? Because when he says preach the word, he's not talking about preach the New Testament. He's talking about preaching the truth of the he, he's constantly saying my gospel like this is my gospel that that Jesus gave me. And so the word was it was what was being shared between the people and it was it was about the experiences they were having while um, while they were walking out this this new faith that was uh, led and guided by the Holy Spirit. Um, yeah, so, but they, so I was going to say it's it's kind of twofold because they do talk about how uh, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. And so they. They do this. And so when you do that, that study of that, what does that mean? The word um, they fully believe that the the Torah and the, the Old Testament books, especially mm -hmm. those wrote by Moses, um, they really believed that those were the words of God mm -hmm. and fully believe that. And so for them, like it's like saying that we're going to say we're preaching the word, we're preaching scripture that they did have. Mm -hmm. And also we're preaching Jesus in that scripture. And so Jesus is the word. So whenever we talk about scripture, we're talking about Jesus, Old Testament or new. And so they they're understanding this. And it's again, this is a big study when you start looking up the word. I remember I started it a long time ago and my brain was like, oh, my gosh, there's so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's really cool. And yeah, they didn't have the New Testament, which is also great when you read New Testament letters and they say uh, all scripture is good for. And they start going on what scripture is good for. I'm like, they're talking about the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. there's some, there's unfortunately, there are some pastors who said, uh, we need to to unhitch from the Old Testament. We need to leave the Old Testament. Like, mm -hmm. no, 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 wait. If we look at context, these, the first church, that's all they studied. And they studied it all the time. And they yeah. studied Jesus inside of it. So why are we not? Like, yeah. Right. No, that's so good, man. Yeah, there's so many what uh theologians would call the, the types of christ that are all through the old testament um all the representations of him through all of you know so many of so many if not all of the the bible characters that you know we would consider the heroes of the faith as far as abraham and david and gideon and all of them they all pieces of their story represented or showed a picture of what christ either had already done or was going to do um the whole Old Testament was really like this prophetic hundreds, thousands of years of time that was all leading up to Jesus coming. Yep. 
uh, oh man, Jonah, Ruth, Esther, yeah. you go through all those books and you're just like, oh man, like it's preaching the gospel without Jesus being around yet. It's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's really good. Um, so I think- I'm going to jump on the next part that says be ready in season and out of season. Mm. Um, and I'm just thinking of that, like when it's time to preach. So for me, I'm ready now. And when there's a lull, so sometimes during the summer is like a lull, I need to be ready to preach then too, like mm-hmm. in and out of season all the time ready. And then of course he says, this is how you do it. You can, so mine says convince, rebuke, exhort, and do all those things with long suffering and teaching. Mm. Exhort. I need to look up what that word means. Exhort. Yeah. So mine uses the word encourage. Or encourage. Exhort. Yeah. Like the positive side. Like rebuke would be the negative side. Exhort would be the positive side. Mm-hmm. Um. So as far as seasons, I that totally makes sense. How you um shared that as far as like when it seems like it like if you're talking to less people there's a probably a fleshly tendency to like uh you know it, i don't have as many people to hear the word back, so huh? yeah, right um my mind went to you know there were a lot of people i mean there's a lot of people all the time but i'd say especially over the last year with everything that's happened um the that there were just probably some darker seasons lonely seasons Uh, things like that. And so my mind kind of went to like, we go through, I think in our faith journey, um, I think this is why uh, Jesus said that it's necessary for temptations to come, like that trials will come, but he's overcome the world. Um, I know for me, um, and this, so me speaking from my personal walk, um, not that I felt like I was in a, a terrible season before, but then we went through what we went through with our son and coming out of that, um it rekindled something in me in a different way just because i had uh this just different life experience and i think as you go through your walk with christ you have these seasons so i went you know i went through a fairly dark season but coming coming out of that season i feel i feel just more drawn to the lord more just where where I was before that happened and where I am now is is a very different place and um, just confidence in God. And I think we go through those seasons all through our lives. You know, we're going to have hard things that come and challenging things um, and what we do with them. If we allow our faith to um, be refined uh, through those things. Um, but I, I say that to say that even through the dark seasons, even through the the hard times, we're still called to be prepared like we we will be tempted in those seasons when things are hard the things that are out of our control happen we will be tempted to become lax in pursuing god uh in loving people being compassionate um i know that was probably one of the biggest struggles for me was just having compassion for other people when i was going through what i was going through and um but in the same sense you are we're always called to to represent Christ, right? To represent him is yeah. what it means like to, to show Jesus wherever we go. So even if you're, you're going through something hard, it's not a license to, um, put off Christ and treat people bad or be so, short of people. I love what you're saying. So I'm thinking <clears throat> this might be even closer to what Paul's talking about is, um, I mean, I guess twofold, like usually a lot of the times the meaning of the, of the verse gets bigger and bigger as you think about it. But like so in season and out of season, so like when it's convenient and when it's not convenient, when you feel like it, when you're like, oh, man, I'm on fire. Like, look at all that I'm learning right now. Like right now is a time where I'm on fire. Like the scripture, I'm doing three Bible studies at once. I'm doing all kinds of stuff, man. Like I am ready to preach at any moment. Mm-hmm. And then also like those moments you said where. I, I had my son in the hospital with Kawasaki disease and I was like, I don't know what to do. And I shut down. I'm like, I wasn't praying to God. I wasn't doing nothing. I was just in zombie mode. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, in those moments when it's not convenient, when it's not easy, we need to be ready to pray. And I'm thinking even bigger scope in the world, in, in America, we, I think we're, I feel like we're coming out of a season when it was convenient and popular to preach about Jesus. Mm-hmm. And now we're going into a season where it's not. 
and again in season out of season that's where my brain's going is like we're going to have those moments when it's easy to preach it when we want to preach it and times where it's not easy and we don't want to preach it and mm-hmm. we need to be ready in both seasons yeah that's so good man uh so just as the worship guy um one of the cool revelations about what we all get to do as worshipers on earth is uh the truth that this is the only time this is the only place like we we get to enjoy a type of worship that the angels in heaven will never know it's a place of where we we can worship out of a place of suffering out of a place of uh pain and loss because the the angels aren't experiencing that in heaven and so those my experience has been i've i've been i've experienced some of the sweetest moments with people and with the lord when when i've been given the grace and the faith because it's not on my like it like it it's not of our own strength any of it if anything good comes out of us it's because the lord has just graciously given us his spirit to to work through us but um but to see what comes out of that when we because we do have a decision to make in that moment he'll he'll provide the grace but you have to you have to accept it um but anyway to to be in that place and to be able to pray with other people or do whatever you do um is so powerful not just in the sense that maybe they know what you're going through and can see that you you know still have faith but i believe it's even it's multiplied when it comes to just the spiritual sense of it what's happening that we can't see you know what god's doing in somebody's life um because of your testimony and so yeah yeah no matter where you're at and we can easily fall into we can make that a lifestyle if we're not careful we can make it a real selfish self-centered season for a long time when we are all literally we say it all the time here you know it's about the you next to you if you've given your life to jesus it's not about you anymore this isn't about me this is about the people that god surrounded you with he's given you his his spirit he's promised you heaven now go share sure go preach the gospel (laughs) sometimes counseling uh i'll just throw in this this thing before we move on uh but sometimes counseling others is the best medicine for you i mean me and uh me and levi we're accountability partners with each other like throughout life not just fight club yeah and uh, there's a couple times where he says to me if i was struggling with this thing you're struggling with what advice would you give me and sometimes that is the most brilliant thing because you know the god speaks through you when you are helping other people you will see the holy spirit speaking through you and you'll give advice you're like where did that come from mm-hmm. so i've seen people who are struggling with um, a loss or going through divorce or something like that they start ministering to other people who are struggling with the same thing and all of a sudden they themselves become more comforted as they try to comfort others as they as they go and and share uh you know truths from the bible with other people they're like yeah that's the truth i needed to hear and for me sometimes my therapy is on the stage when i'm preaching because i'm up there preaching going like i don't know if anyone out there is getting anything out of this but i needed to hear this today <laughs> and so yeah I think I think I've heard all of you speaking pastors share that same thing uh, between you and Byron, Nate and Levi. Yeah, I, I can imagine. Yeah. And I, I think even these in these 714s, you know, I we hope and pray that, every, you know, everybody listening gets a little nugget of something out of it. But it's Rick says it all the time, you know, that this is just so good for him. It's, it's good for all of us. Um, these are things had we not stopped and just shoot on three verses you know how easy is it just to breeze through it and not give it uh the thought and uh, attention that god probably meant for it to have right for paul thank god so awesome um okay before we go on just real quick just the idea of correcting rebuking and encouraging is how it, it says do it with Mine says great patience and careful instruction. Um, yeah. So there's some, there's uh, we live in a world that's very non un, non confrontational. People don't generally. There's certain personality types that are extremely confrontational. Usually it's just over social media though. If you're in face to face, most people aren't super confrontational. Yeah. Um, but but there is such 
an important place for what you were just talking, just accountability, which is like what you and Levi, you know, have. Um, it's it's a sorely missed thing, I believe. Um, I, I think in some big ways. Um, I think we have a fear of um, alienating or making somebody feel bad or them thinking something negatively about you, you know, if you're the one doing it, you know, trying to rebuke them. Um, but it's, it's like you're raising your kids, you know, you don't, you don't, uh, you're never going to lead your kids to the Lord or show them what good character looks like if your job, if you treat your job as a parent as just to make your children happy or to pat them on the back for everything they do rebuking them correcting them is a part of it like that's that's love right spare the rod spoil the child type thing uh it's the same for us it never changes god like it says the word i don't know where the reference is but it says if you are not being disciplined by the lord you're an illegitimate child and so um i don't know i don't know what i don't know what that means i know for me it's one of those things where um if I really love you and I see something, then I have an obligation to say, hey, this doesn't quite look right. Mm. Not sure if you see it or not. but It's hard work. And and again, teaching is hard work, but especially when you're rebuking or, um, you know, again, trying to help someone see the wrong they're doing. Uh, it does take a lot of patience because even at first they might be like, Nah, it's not what you think. It's it's not like that. They have excuses. They have stuff like, all right, man, I hear you, but I'm pretty sure you need to think twice. And so it, it does. It takes patience. You have to be slow. And and again, I love the analogy of the kids. Mm-hmm. So true. Um, it's hard work. It's hard work creating uh, decent human beings for society. For sure. For sure. Yes. Okay. All right. We ready to move on? Yep. Okay, Ooh, this is good. Okay. It's not good, but it's good. Okay, for the time will come when people will not, this is verse three, when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. But you keep your head in all situations endure hardship do the work of an evangelist discharge all the duties of your ministry man yeah preaching the gospel Mm -hmm. Um, evangelists would be preaching the gospel to the unbelievers yeah oh my gosh yeah so that might be I mean, just a quick saying about that. Um, we are all called to be evangelists. We're all called to be ready to, to preach the good news. Mm-hmm. To be an actual evangelist um, as your job title, that is a little different. Like, and I think Timothy was. Like, I think that was his job title. But for us, um, don't don't push that off. Saying, "Well, I'm not an evangelist. I'm just a dentist or whatever." Yeah. Um, no, you are. You're called to preach the word. I mean, that's the great commission, right? to uh, share that truth that is in you, like mm-hmm. to everyone, that you should be quick to tell people about Jesus. Um, people should be asking you, why are you weird? And you can tell them because of Jesus. Like mm-hmm. you should stick out enough that people should be asking you questions. Um, but with that being said, mm-hmm. uh, that evangelist stuck out to me so quick. But man, like that, that first part, doesn't that like, oh, uh, they wrote this about 2021, didn't they? Mm-hmm. My gosh. Yeah. I see so... Uh, I'm a guy who I like sound doctrine and I like, I like people to explain to me, Hey, that sounds great. What you said about God, where is it in the scripture? So I can memorize that. Like Mm -hmm. I'm that guy. I ask those questions. And so, but there's so many people now who have nice, pretty sayings that just aren't true. I mean, I could do a whole list of uh, things that sound like they're in the Bible, but they're not. And Mm -hmm. And this is something where more and more people want to hear those things, the itching ears. And there's so many pastors that are becoming YouTube famous and their videos are getting shared everywhere. And honestly, they've said things that are not according to the scripture. And Mm -hmm. so for me, I'm like, 
somebody tells me they listen to that pastor and I'm like, oh, you should be careful. Like, and I, I try to help them. Like when a pastor says one thing off from the scripture until they rebuke, until they pull that and say, I'm sorry, I was wrong. We should be cautious with them. So, mm -hmm. yeah. 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 And it, it speaks to the importance of, um, if, if you're one who is on a platform of any kind, really, I mean, it, whether it's on a stage or not, if you are one who, um, I mean, really, if you're a Christ follower, there, there should be growing in a level of your ability to share what's in the word. And so if you're in that place of sharing the word, it is, it is very important to, uh, to know that what you're, what you're learning is revelation from the scripture like we can glean and learn i've you know i've learned so much from so many other books and pastors and teachings and things like that for sure but like you said chris if if you do not run that through the filter and lens of scripture itself uh to know where uh, it is uh then you, you you should be leery that's for me if i'm listening to someone a lot of times it's uh for me, I guess a red flag would be if you don't hear a lot of scripture. I listen to a lot of people who will throw, they'll say something, but then they have four or five verses, you know, that back that thought up. Um, and yeah, it, we are we are in a season. I don't I don't know per capita how many churches we're surrounded. Not to say that the churches you're surrounded by are not good churches, but there's so many. There's so much opportunity um for there to be false teaching and false doctrine um yeah no I'm, I'm with you there's just and i think the saddest part is that i think um a lot of people leaving the church which i mean as a youth pastor i hear these, these statistics all the time of the amount of students who were in church and are leaving the church and i think that's largely due to uh, a lack of preaching the word to even the students. And so then when they get older, so for instance, right now we have the, the coronavirus that, I mean, it shut down everything and the whole world was shaken. And it's like, if you're believing that God is this genie God who you just rub the lamp and ask for something, he gives it to you, or uh, he's the, the nice, I don't know what you want to call him, the protector God who, who keeps you from all harm. And he just, he's always protecting you. Um, from anything bad in the world, well, then the coronavirus ruined that view of God. Mm. And so for me, like, if we're not preaching the scripture, and again, I said this before, I think, but you got to look up the story of the scripture and why we have what we have and like how the Bible came to be. Because when you look up that and you look up the Dead Sea Scrolls and you look up all those things, you'll realize that this is trustworthy. Like, I mm. say this is the word of God, not because... Uh, someone told me so or or you know god told me no no this is like first i looked it up myself and found that this is historically accurate um the words that we have today are really close to the words they had two thousand years ago like it is there are no mishaps or people changing words to make it sound better it that's not really a thing in our bible and so we can trust it as the word of god and that's why i'm saying if anyone is going against what it says in here, they're going against, again, the miracle that we even have this Bible. They're going mm -hmm. against thousands of years of doctrine. And like, no, you you can't go and say, God's telling me this stuff, but it's against his word that he protected. There's no way that we would have this Bible today unless someone, meaning God, protected it for this many years. And I'm saying all that just to say that, man, we really need to be ready for mm -hmm more and more because it says it's supposed to get worse in the last day so as we get closer to that great day of the lord uh, that day when jesus christ comes back we need to be ready for worse and worse and more oh it's going to sound so close to right but mm -hmm. then the last part's going to be twisted mm -hmm. and again and that's why people are starting to give up on the bible and giving up on christ is because they heard these pretty words about how jesus makes your life better how God is going to make your life, uh, the life you live now is going to be, what's that word? The the greatest life you'll ever have is with Jesus. I'm like, well, actually, the greatest life we have is the next life. 
this mm-hmm. world is going let, let's read the scripture where it says it will be full of troubles mm-hmm. i mean i think in timothy multiple times he said you're going to have afflictions you're going to be you're going to have people coming against you and hating you jesus mm-hmm. is a word said the world will hate you mm-hmm. no we're not going to have a good life now our best life is not now it's the next life mm-hmm. we, if we have good things now we thank god for it but we fully expect to have the best life next. So we're quick to give away our stuff to people in need. We're quick to, to do weird things and, and go where the Holy Spirit leads us because our life, our best life, is in the afterlife. And so mm-hmm. that's what we're waiting on. And I, I know I'm preaching now, but I just I, I get choked up thinking about how many people are led astray by some of these big pastors with great messages i mean they're great speakers like they could give a a speech almost in any platform and do really well and they're leading people astray and it's just like that is that to me just bothers me a lot and so we as people of christ need to be quick to say where's that in scripture or even say wait 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 i'm pretty sure i know some verses because i've been reading them call them out and we need to say hey wait can you explain to me why what you're saying is going against this verse and mm-hmm. in a way but we need to to be always ready to to do that yeah yeah the, the gospel the word is not an avenue for us to gain uh that's i think that's where it, it come it starts with good intentions and then um i think uh, sorry, hang on a second. Um, it starts with good intentions, and then unfortunately, the a lot of it, you know, we're not gonna throw out names or churches or anything like that, but um, there's an expectation that's put on those churches that are so influential, and um, there's the well, I've heard uh, one pastor said the higher, higher the ladder, the sharper the knives, something like that, but. <laughs> you go up the more you know the more uh provision god gives you the more influence that you gain um there's temptation to to be that one who is tickling ears and making it all about the people who are listening when and at the end of the day it's not it's not about us it's not about it's all about jesus and if the focus isn't on him and people coming to know him more um if it's about you having a better day and about you know, you, whatever, if it's about you at all, it's, it's not about the right thing. Like to live is Christ and to die is gain. And so, um, it's a tough pill to swallow, um, for our flesh, but, um, we're supposed to be crucified with Christ. Right. And so it's tough. That's a tough, it's a tough order. And so it's tough. Um, when you, uh, if you give your life to Christ and it's it's shared with you in such a way that, hey, this is your life, it will be forever changed, but not in the sense of your life's going to get so much better now that you have Jesus in the sense of yeah. the worldly things. It will get better in the sense that God will give you supernatural grace and peace and hope and faith and things that you can't see. Um, but as far as all the external things, trials will come, hardships will come, and um, and they're all you that you everybody's going to go through them, whether you know Jesus or not. It's whether you choose to allow those things to refine you, and you allow God to, as the psalm psalmist would say, pull off the dross when you get when you get melted down. It's re- you know referring to a blacksmith refining a metal, and it's the dross is what rises to the top when that metal that gold or whatever it is and so that dross comes to the top and that the blacksmith would pull that off the top yeah. so um so yeah we have to allow god to pull those things away and you know and so with that i love i love everything you're saying I, i'll just add in there that uh we we as uh, followers of christ we fully gave ourselves to him it's now he is our Lord, so we follow in what he wants us to do, whether rich or poor. We do we go where he wants us to go, and in that we find hope that helps us to endure. Uh, we have a hope for the next life, a hope for uh, people that are around us 
we have this uh, almost annoying hope that brings us joy to people. They're like, the whole world's burning. Why are you? Why are you okay? I'm like, I'm okay because I know the world's burning and it's supposed to burn worse. And just wait till Jesus comes back. Then the world will literally burn. Like we just have this. Like we know the end of the story. So no, we're not scared. We're not anxious. We have moments, but those things fade away in light of Jesus. And so mm-hmm. uh, that's that's what we have that other people don't have. We don't have things. Uh, more than likely, if the world turns against Christians sooner than later, we're going to lose our houses. We're going to lose everything because they're, they're going to come after us and they're going to come after us hard. Um, and so that's where if we end up seeing the same persecution today that they seen 2,000 years ago, um, we will lose everything for Jesus. And we will be glad in it because we will be sharing in the suffering of Christ, as Paul says. And mm-hmm. so that is what we look forward to. And that is what we get. So yeah. don't be fooled by these people who say uh, you need to have more faith or you need to have like, no, that's not what we're here for. The Holy Spirit will do miracles and the Holy Spirit will do awesome stuff through us. But that's that's not it. Like that's only after the hope, after the joy, after what we already have. And I'm going to start preaching again. So we need to end it before we set a record. We probably should. <laughs> we don't have we probably should. here to tell us to stop. <laughs> so we'll, yeah, we'll we'll stop right there. We got through four, what, five verses. So we'll we'll, uh, we'll let it take take back off on verse six tomorrow. So. Yeah, we better end it. Chris, why don't you go ahead and start us in prayer and I'll end us. I will. (laughs) Oh, Father, um, you are so amazing. I love seeing all that you've done in my life and in lives of others and hearing the stories of how you're orchestrating your people uh, together in doing some amazing things. Lord, we know you're at work and we see it all around us. And we thank you for that. Uh, Lord, I ask because you you say you give it freely. So I ask for wisdom for all those listening. Uh, help them to have some wisdom to understand even a small, a small piece of what Tony and I were talking about today. Lord, whatever it was you were trying to say through us, uh, let it let it sink into our hearts that we may hold it there uh, throughout the rest of this week. Help us to to hold on to these verses so that when the trials come, when things come, uh, we will be quick to turn to you and quick to turn to these verses that that re- remind us what's most important. And Lord, I also thank you for the hope that we have. And I ask that you'll put a burning desire in us to uh, want that same hope for others, that we will be uh, quick to to talk about you, to talk about this uh, Jesus Christ and the good news of what he did on this earth and what he's about to do soon. Lord, help us to talk to people about that, to convince people, to to want to convince them to turn, to turn towards you, to turn their feet and take their next steps towards, uh, again, a a life worth living. And Lord, I also ask that you will uh, just help us to be able to see people for where they're at and what's going on so that we can better serve them and better speak on your behalf. Yes, God, we just thank you, God. Thank you for an opportunity to come boldly before your throne of grace, God. And we thank you for the grace that empowers us every day, God, to do things that we even take for granted or aren't even conscious of. Lord, you are the one who is working in us and through us. And Lord, we just thank you for uh, just the privilege of being a vessel for you, Lord. And I just pray for everybody listening, God, that you would just meet them right where they're at, God. Whatever piece of this conversation that uh, you had for them, Lord that anything we said would not be taken as a any kind of guilt or shame or condemnation god but just a uh, a view of uh, yours god that uh, this world is uh, not going to end well lord it's promised through your word lord but the, but we are also promised god that we are more than conquerors lord and that we are promised to place with you for eternity god and so i just pray for endurance i thank you for peace and patience god i thank you uh for the 
the world we get to live in, Lord. This this world is a gift to us from you, Lord. You created this world for us to to subdue and uh, rule over, God. And so right now we want to lift up those who uh, have been placed in leadership, God, as uh, our president, Lord, our vice president, governors and officials, Lord. God, we lift them up to you, Lord. We pray that you would bless them uh, with wisdom, with peace. Uh, God, you would give them joy and you would give them hope, God, that uh, the pride of life and the, the sin of the flesh, God, would not be a part of who they are, God. And I just thank you that um, you have blessed us with such a place of affluence. And um, thank you for the leaders of our churches as well, Lord. Thank you for our pastors. Um, we pray that you would reveal truth to them, God, that they would rightly divide the word of truth and that they would uh, share that with their people with conviction and uh, that they would do that with discipline and doctrine that is honoring to you, to you and the preservation of your word, Lord. We love you today. We thank you. Go with us. Go before us and uh, lead us into uh, experiences that we can look back on and know that you were there, that you were the one who ordained it, Lord. And we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Thank you, everybody. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And uh, you guys have a happy Tuesday and uh, a good rest of your week. Yep. Bye-bye.